Okay. And this is where I turn up and this is where it also, I just left, hello, we've graphics and everything. Hi, uh, good evening and welcome to episode one of Shelf Analysis. My name is Rick O'Shea. Uh, you'll know that because you're in my book club and this is the only place we're going to be doing this. Um, why? Why am I doing this? Uh, there's a little bit of, and it was a couple of people I was talking to the other day, you know where we all are right now, and you know that a lot of people are, are very at home at the moment, and a lot of people are in some form of lockdown, and a lot of people can't necessarily get to do the things they want to do right now. So the book club has become a bit of a place of, refuge is the wrong word, but it's become a place in which we can disappear for a while every day and not think about news and what's going on in the world. And the other part of my job does that as well on, on RTE Gold, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I came up with the foolish idea because lots of people are at home every night and are craving some form of entertainment. Um, and a lot of authors are at home at the moment as well with not a huge amount to do at eight o'clock every night. And they might say, yes, that we conduct a chat show. Uh, the chat show involves uh, me sitting here in my kitchen. This is, well, I'll give you, the, let's briefly give you the hope. So that's, well, that's the back, that's not my kitchen. My kitchen's over there. Look, see, right? So um, Liz is going to kill me. She staged this whole thing to make it all look really impressive. Oh, look, I've got the cable. Going. This is not going to have serious production values. You're fully aware of this, right? Okay, good. Um, we will get to comments in a while. You can please drop them to us below here and we'll get to questions. We have a guest on the show tonight and we will be talking to that guest in a while. Uh, we're going to do this show five nights a week at 8 p.m. It's going to last maybe about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, depending um, depending on when my, my my sanity runs out. And I go, that's it, it's enough, I'm on the live television thing. Um, and there are a bunch of other things that are happen going to happen throughout these shows, Monday to Friday at 8 o'clock here. Uh, other part of the job uh, that's worth flagging with you as well is that I work on RTE Gold every day. Just Google RTE Gold, you'll find out a bit about it. Today we went uh, live for, for 12 hours every day between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's not something we normally do at Gold, but at the moment, again, there are a lot of people who are all attempting to find themselves a little oasis of calm in the world. And that's partially what we're also trying to do here. So go and look up RTE Gold, it's where you'll find me at 10 o'clock um, every morning. Um, we did a test yesterday. Uh, you may have seen it. It involved me checking to see whether or not I could make this particular piece of software work and bring in somebody else as an interview guest. Of course, yesterday I didn't have anybody knocking around, so we used one of our plants in the house. I didn't realize the plant had a name. The plant has a name. The plant's name is Karina. Uh, I was told this afterwards. Um, what I wasn't expecting was that people liked Karina a lot. In fact, they seemed more interested in Karina being part of yesterday's very brief broadcast than me being part of yesterday's very brief. So as a result of which, we've been asked, what's Karina up to right now? So hey, this is how this works. So I press this button here. Karina is going to turn up here. There's Karina. Hang on, I'm going to disappear. Just... And get rid of thank you karina thank you goodbye she is reading um at the moment kim uh where have i got what's the name of the book the book is immediately here this is all going to be a bit dodge i'm going to be brutally honest with you because there's an element of me not necessarily knowing how to press the buttons and how to make all of these things work uh no the book is lost forget it we'll come back to it karina's book uh that she is reading at the moment uh we'll tell you about it a little bit later in the show mainly because i'm actually finding it hard to press buttons and figure out how i get to the next item here there's going to be a lot of this it's kind of okay and that's kind of why I decided I was going to do this, because it's going to be a bit shambolic and it's going to be a bit, you know, I'm not 100% quite sure how all of this is going to work out. And that's, that's part of the fun of this. So um, questions, stick them in below. Um, if you're going to be talking about us on social, this apparently does work, which is quite nice. That's okay there. So we've got that if you're on Twitter or you're on Instagram and you're talking about the show, please feel free to take really, really bad um, uh, screen grabs of everything it is that we do here, um, because that's easily doable. And you can let us know what's going on. Can I scroll? Oh, I scroll. Oh, I scroll on the bottom of the page like that. Now, very good. Because now I can show you what the book was. See, Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju, which uh, is very good. I haven't read it yet. Uh, Liz has read it out of yet. That's the book that is currently being read by Karina, the housekeeper. Okay. 
I'm going to figure out how all this goes as we go along, because let's face it, we have a lot of time to be doing this. We genuinely do. Um, I'm going to bring my first guest into the show, and um, this took a little bit of getting together today, but he was a guy who I knew would persist with me, because uh, he is not just an author, um, and not just somebody whose face you will know, but somebody who's a friend of mine as well, and he just has endless patience with me, which is, which is lovely. Um, so the very first guest, the very first shelf analysis, wherever you are, virtually, please put your hands together, uh, for the wonderful Dave Rudd. Let's see, where's Dave? Dave, we do on show. Hello, how's Dave? it going? Dave is in his house, um, which, weirdly, we're going to do a lot of these. And hopefully I'm going to do ones with authors in other countries as well. But you and I are probably about maybe three miles from each other, both right? Like, maybe even a little less. Yeah, like you're in, you're in, yeah, we're, we're not that far away from each other. I could yell out, I could lean out my window and shout. I mean, I won't, but I could. And tell me, how has um, the last week, 10 days been for you? where you are. I know a lot of authors that I talk to all kind of go, hey, self-isolation, you know, that's, that's not that different than what normally goes on. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's been a big change. I mean, I spend my, my mornings doing school visits and to lose uh, so far uh, two weeks worth of, of that and of, of, of income and of uh, getting to talk to cool young people about books uh, has been a bit of a blow. Uh, I find myself like weirdly pottering around my house a lot. The place has never been tidier. Um, our cash, myself and my wife's cash, is very confused about why we're around the whole time. Like the dogs of Ireland are delighted, um, but cats are like, why are you here all the time? Feed me or get out. Um, so it's been a bit of an adjustment, but there have been some like small kind of nice things about it as well. I've gotten back to reading in a big way. Uh, I find that I find just what people are doing to, to adapt would really fascinating. There's so much outpouring of creative stuff online that is really nice as well. But um, yeah, it's weird times. Um, I should point out a, a, a couple of things. And before I do something that I, I haven't quite told you about as of yet, we're going to ask each of our authors uh, as they're on every night to pick just three books, three books that they want to go, here, read this. This could be good for you, whether it's right now or whether it's just in general. And I'm going to ask you to do that in a minute. And um, Dave, of course, sorry, one of the things I will have to do is tell people who people are, because obviously I know who you are and because and we know each other. Dave is the author of the Knights of the Bar Dark series amongst other things. He's also the author of Big Oh. Bro. <laughs> Creepy as well. Um, and of, uh, amongst other things, the Doctor Who 12 Angels Weeping book as well, which was out last year. And we're not allowed to say that you're in the middle potentially of maybe writing some other Doctor Who or something. We're definitely not allowed to say that. We're definitely not allowed to say that. <laughs> um, I'm going to show this. This is quite nice because this is, I found this earlier on. Um, this is the first night we met. Yeah. Oh, a literary dead match. Um, one of the one of my prouder, weirder moments. Uh, going head to head with three other authors and uh, getting to yell about vampires at the Bram Stoker Festival. That was a lot of fun. Although, look at my hair. I really needed a haircut. Probably, what, about a year before Knights of the Borrowed Dark came out, roughly? Yeah, that was 2015. Uh, I was only a child. Um, but yeah, it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a fun time since then. This is the first gig I've ever got to do in my... Are, are you, sorry, hang on. Dem you're wearing pyjamas. Demonstrate that to me there again one more time. A little cabaret <laughs> kick pyjamas. I've at least worn jeans and a hoodie. I've at least attempted to make myself, you know, look in some way. <laughs> I haven't been outside in days. This is the. I'm really curious about like how people's plague beards are going to look in a while because obviously you can't go to like barbers and stuff. So I'm cur I'm going to look like a yeshi in like a few months with like full on beard. You do. You have, you you have a huge amount of hair normally. Um, I'm I'm kind of okay in that. I try to keep this. If I I think if I tried to grow something much larger than this, it would be far too much. Like I was Ronnie Drew or Grizzly Adams, I don't think it would work. <laughs> Maybe it would I don't know. I mean, if not now, when you know? No, no. Uh, some of some of some of us have to appear on television every night. Look, I'm, I've now got a new career as an internet chat host. Um, sure. So, a few things we want to do. Um, I've asked you about what's going on where you are and the fact that you, you guys are in, and obviously the fact that your cat is normally the lord of all that your cat surveys, and you're at home annoying your cat at the moment, which is which is fair. And tell me about books. I've asked you to pick three. You have a couple there. I don't really know what they are, other than you have two of them physically, and one of them I have a cover for here. So where do you want to start? Which one to go? 
So um, I think we'll start with um, revisiting old classics. So I think um, I've definitely found it like on one side of a lot more time to read at the minute, but on the other side, we're just under a deluge of news and updates and it can be quite stressful to concentrate on stuff. So I found uh, diving into short story collections has been really uh really useful because they don't require a huge amount of attention. You can start and finish it off in the in one go. So one thing I found myself revisiting is uh, Neil Gaiman's Smoke and Mirrors. Very nice. So this is, uh, this was Neil Gaiman's first short story collection. And you can really tell it's sort of like younger, edgier Neil Gaiman. It's sort of just after um, Sandman. And so um, the stories are a little bit dark. If, you, if you're not familiar with Neil Gaiman, uh, sort of dark fairy tales set in the real world uh, kind of stuff. I don't know why I'm doing a tiny hand dance, but there you go. Um, so this is a collection of short stories. Say again? It's, 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 it's the internet, it works. The visual part is really impressive. Keep going, keep doing the hand dance. I mean, Ryan, I've got very big puppy energy, basically. So um, there's uh, short stories, there's poetry. Um, some are frightening, some are uh, very sweet. There's one about a little old lady who finds the Holy Grail in a charity shop. Uh, and she brings it home and these knights keep showing up trying to get it off her. And she's like, no, leave me alone. Um, and she's like scrubbing the blood out of it and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's definitely, if you're, if you're a big fan of Neil Gaiman and haven't come across this, or if you have never heard of him before, this is a good introduction. A conversation I'm going to have with a lot of people as well, and, and I know lots of people in the book club are asking about stuff that is appropriate either for kids, teenagers, older teenagers. You know, with Neil Gaiman, it depends. Some of his stuff obviously isn't appropriate for your average teenager. Some of it borders on it, and some of it is. Where, where does that go? Yeah, I would say this is half and half. I would say that um, obviously when it comes to figuring out what your kid it will be comfortable with, it will depend on it will depend on you and it will depend on the kid. I will say that that story I, t I mentioned, which is called Chivalry, is actually that's the great thing about a collection of short stories. I would say 50% of this is comfortable for, we'll say, 11 to 13 year olds. But because they're short, um, you can sit down and read them beforehand. Um, I do think there's a couple in there that are quite frightening. There's a couple in there that are not maybe explicitly adult, but are definitely uh, definitely a little bit older. Um, but there's a lot in there that there's still, like he is a children's author as well as, as writing kind of mainline fantasy. So uh, I think if you've got a, if you've got a uh, 11 to 13 year old who has maybe already moved on to YA, it's YA level. You should be fine with all of it at YA level. Okay. Um, um, before you get to the second book, I'm going to ask you really briefly, and I'll probably ask this of other people across the series as well. Um, you were saying, you're right. One of the reasons that I'm doing this is because people are being deluged with news information. You're either, you've got a radio on in the background, maybe you're the sort of person who has rolling news on. I could never have been that person. I'm just not built that way. But, you know, maybe you're checking stuff on your app, you know, 10 times a day. How have you been finding a space where you can just go, no, go, go away? Do you have any, any tricks? Do you, how, how does that work? So myself and um, Sarah and my wife have been trying to watch the news just once a day. Um, it's so, it's so grim that like, and I obviously like, like that we check in when um, the reports of infected or the reports of um, uh, people uh, who are afflicted by the, the virus, we check in when that's been updated. Um, so generally we'll watch the nine o'clock news, but we'll try and not talk about it after we watch the news or before we're going to sleep because otherwise you just won't sleep basically um really strange grim times uh I, so I a moment where i can hear you there say we, you know we've been checking in reports of the infected and those who've been infected by the virus and i'm thinking this is you and i in a zombie movie somewhere where this is one of those you know sections that occurs it, it's strange because we were watching and we decided to go full tilt into it so my daughter was here not last weekend but the weekend before and we went okay we're going to watch some stuff how about Shaun of the dead and 28 days later and, <laughs> and it worked really well it was a really nice antidote particularly Shaun of the dead was was a was a great way to even though it started the pandemic which i kind of suddenly forgotten um, but it was it was it was a nice way for us to go yeah it could, it could be work could, could be zombies could be in a tunnel 
I mean, I don't know if anybody has seen um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost recreate the scene from Shaun of the Dead where they talk about how to go to the Win- how to not go to the Winchester and wait for everything to blow over because self isolation is important. Yeah. Um, it's really weird. Celebrities have I try and avoid celebrity culture a lot, but watching Sam Neill play with a duck has been actually very healing for me. And sometimes those are the things that you need to find to keep you just going through the next era, the next year. All right. Um, book number two, Dave, what have you got? So actually your mention of watching um, uh, contagious uh, movies uh, is kind of what I had in mind as well. My second book is uh, The Boy in the Bridge by M. Or Carey. So um, this is this is the companion or sibling book to The Girl with All the Gifts, which is a really um, fantastic blockbuster of a book. Uh, about a uh, zombie-riven world where a girl called Melanie is being taught um, by a, along with these other children on a military base. And very quickly you begin to learn that something is wrong when all the kids come into the classroom and then are shackled to their chairs. And you basically find out that um, Melanie is a carrier for the zombie virus, but not, um, not purely first level infected herself. Uh, Girl All the Gifts is fantastic. There's a really good um, movie adaptation of it, uh, which is rare that you get a really good movie adaptation, but um, uh, Girl All the Gifts is very good. Boy on the Bridge kind of exists in its shadow a bit. I don't think there was as big a buzz about it, but I find this is it's really interesting uh, voice, um, really interesting depiction of a group of soldiers out in the wilderness surrounded by... Uh, the Hungries, as they're called. Uh, I would say read, it's not a sequel to Girl with All the Gifts. It will make a little bit more sense if you read Girl with All the Gifts first, which I do hear mentioned in the in the book club a bit. But um, if your response to the general terror that we're living in is to lean in, then you can't go wrong with this. Okay, um, I, I'm going to say uh, as well, we got loads of, I, I'm just thinking off doing that. Coming back, there you go, that might be different. That might help with my camera settings. There you go, okay. And for everybody who's going, yeah, I can see Dave really well. Rick's not so good. I mean, Dave is obviously really well in this, let's be honest. You I'm a loud boy. You really have. Uh, and I've lit myself slightly more uh, more, more darkly. We do have questions coming in, which is great. We're going to get to that in a minute. The third one you've suggested is a really interesting idea because it's not really a book. Yes. Um, so before I go on to my final choice, I just want to make an honorary mention for the book I'm reading now, which is a Handiwork by Sarah Baum. Um, again, when you're looking for something short and uh, not not breezy, but something short that you can easily digest, um, this is a, a just out, um, beautifully written, um, small and strange and sad. If you've loved Sarah Baum's other books, you're going to love this as well. So very quick mention of that. Um, my final, my final, final one. I don't have a physical copy for it because I'm reading it on my iPad like a heathen. But I, uh, I love graphic there. novel. Say again. I have it there, right on screen in front of you. Oh, fantastic! Um, big green boy. Uh, so I, uh, I'm sort of using this time to. I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies. I haven't read a lot of the comics, so I've been delving in more and more. And one character that I never really clicked with or gelled with was the Hulk, you know, big green rage monster, not super complicated or exciting. But Al Ewing is writing um, a run called The Immortal Hulk at the minute, which you can jump into without having read um, any other Hulk comics. I think that's something that does put off people getting into comics because you're like, where do I start? Um, But you can start, this is a a comic that came out in 2018, um, The Immortal Hulk. It's basically the Hulk reimagined as a horror comic, like one of those old... um, crunchy, weird, sort of like 70s horror comics, because it is basically a werewolf story. Um, It really delves into the character of Banner and how twisted up he is by carrying this creature around with him. Really delves into the Hulk as a tragic character. It's quite creepy. There's lots of like body horror in it. Um, But I've been really, it gave me an insight into a character that I previously dismissed as being kind of simple. Yeah, and tell me about this, because you and I have had conversations, you know, back in the days when people used to meet for pints and pubs, we've had conversations about um, about Marvel and about the kind of package thing. Explain exactly how that works with the kind of the, the, the Marvel Unlimited packaging thing. You have. I'm really, yeah. really poor. 
So um, I came across an app called uh, Marvel Unlimited uh, last year. It's, 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 it's done by Marvel. It's a free, um, the downloading the app is free, but you basically buy a subscription. It's Netflix for comics is a really easy way of describing it. So um, you buy a subscription, I think it's 71 euro for a year, and you can use that to read anything Marvel have ever done, basically. So I think when I told you about it, we were sitting, I think in a cinema, and you were saying that like, no, you know, I'm a huge comic fan. I can't delve into something like this. And surely you can't have everything. And I was like, pick a comic. And you were like, Thunderbolts one from 1979, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. So, if you're if you're interested in delving into comics uh, and you want to have them kind of like all laid out in front of you, like a Netflix menu, seventy one quid, even as a present for somebody, and you're who you know is into comics, but you don't want to go into a comic book shop, and also now you can't. Um, but like having that paralysis of not knowing what to get somebody or what they already have, a subscription to Marvel Unlimited as a birthday present or a Christmas present uh, is fantastic. I'm noticing a a comment. Someone commented that they they would love a Mark Ruffalo. Um, you see those two. Oh, you can see the comments as well. I'm just pulling up the comments here. And you I, I can see. Um, I can see comments. Uh, Sharon Doyle says loves Marvel and loves the interview. That's good. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, <laughs> I can kind of see, I can see like the, they're going very quickly. We've got 147, but I can kind of see people. Oh, um, I can do it. Uh, how I mix comic chats. Um, I'm going to uh, be here because I'm, I'm going to pull you a couple of questions from here. So I've, I've got a few of them that are that are just here quite more, more specific. And we will get to okay, them later. People are saying that um, they're maybe having problems with their broadband. This will be archived to this show. This is not just live. So what you'll be able to do is go back tomorrow or go back later on this evening and it'll buffer for you properly properly and you'll be able to watch the whole conversation because obviously some people depending on which part of the country you're in your broadband might not necessarily be great or which part of Dublin you're in your broadband you know, would be great. Uh, somebody does say you may need to move closer to the broadband box than you think me Jake. We will keep that in mind for <laughs> uh, one uh, one person just says ah pints in the pub the good old days I quite like that um, love the girl with all the gifts not something I'd normally read but we'll definitely read that now thanks a million cool uh, um, loved Girl with All the Gifts, just finished it, uh, recommend it. There's loads of people saying really nice stuff about that, which is which is great, including Girl with All the Gifts gave me nightmares, which uh, I quite like. Um, oh, it's incredibly creepy. Like, the, you know, it's hard to do, it's hard to bring something new to the tables with, with, with Zombie, but like, like um, Girl with All the Gifts really goes for that kind of literary edge, and it's beautifully written, as well as being kind of pulpy and fun as well. Dave, uh, Dave, this is you, has apparently written a fantasy tr trilogy for children and they're really good. I mean, who knew that was a, a thing? Do you said you're a copy of the society, you can demonstrate it, you can just get put up. Um, I'm going to go with uh, anybody who has a specific question for uh, Dave or myself. I'm going to up right now and we'll get to them. I've got, I've got one here from Suzanne Kelly. Any chance for a creative writing session online for us during this madness? Seeing your work with the students, you were brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Suzanne. Um, yeah, I'd be very up for doing, maybe that's something shelf analysis could look at down the road is um doing a like a full-on kind of writing tips kind of thing yeah i think it's a great idea you do some stuff with rte junior at the moment as well aren't you? yeah which and like i generally don't think about um what age group my tips are for so those tips are uh are directed at if um they were written for younger people but i think there's stuff you can get out of them no matter what age you're writing for like quality is quality Okay. Um, anything else you want to let us know that you're doing right now, just before we finish up? Anything you want to get a plug-in for stuff that you're doing yourself at the moment? Where will people find you online if they want to see what you're up to? So I'm on Twitter at uh, D underscore Rudden Writes. Uh, I'm sure Rick can maybe link to that in the episode description. Uh, type I I um, will have a book out uh, this year, but I can't tell you what it is yet. Um, uh, I, I will also be, um, I do have those um, mini writing video workshops that you can find on RTE Junior. Also, RTE Junior have a podcast called We Love Books, which is um, for kids uh, to listen to. Um, I have writing tips on those as well. Uh, I would also throw in a plug for, um, because obviously we can't go to book launches, um, we are kind of relying on the amazing Rick um, to put on things like this, but also there is a Twitter AMA uh, about handiwork. 
um, on um, Tram mm-hmm. Press's Twitter account yeah. on Wednesday at eight. Um, I think it's at eight. Double check no, that. No, no, Follow no, no, Wednesday, Twitter. Wednesday at six. Let's get this right. Wednesday at six. Wednesday. Wednesday at 6, Everybody. dear God, uh, at Wednesday at 6, so um, you'll get a chance to ask more author questions there, and I'll be floating about as well, sharing gifts. So Okay, this has been uh, an extraordinary first episode. Thank you for playing along with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, live from his... Do you want to actually, just really quickly before we go, oh, yeah. can you see... People Come see my office. Uh, so here we've got, um, what do we see? Uh, can I turn the camera around? I can. Oh, you can. So this is my big, stupid, giant computer, because I'm a big gaming nerd. Um, it is on a gimbal. It is on a, like, I can move it around, which is uh, hilarious. Um, here is where I paint uh, Warhammer models uh, instead of doing work. So here is a little boy that I'm working on now. Uh, here is Ron Swanson who glares at me and forces me to work. Uh, here are some, this is my large monolith computer. Here is some books and some models and some general stuff. I'm gonna not show you my laundry basket. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of, this is where I um, This is where I do my work. Um, so thank you so much uh, guys for tuning in. Rick, thank you so much for, for bringing me into this. This is uh, so lovely. Um, but you're great for putting together something like this. And uh, yeah. yeah, thanks so much guys. Listen, I'll talk to you later, Dave. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks a million, man. Yes, thank you. Cheers. Oh, the uh, wonderful and extraordinary Dave Rudden, uh, author of Nights of the Borrowed Dark, amongst other things. And uh, the Doctor Who 12 Angels Weeping book is brilliant as well, in which Dave takes one of the Doctor Who villains uh, for each of the stories that he writes in it. It came in hardback last Christmas. I'm sure you'll be able to get it virtually and or online and or from your favorite bookstore uh, at the moment. I don't really have much else for you for tonight. This is, believe it or not, just the demo. This is just how I've attempted to put this together for tonight. It's very rough around the edges. It will get better. The plan is we will have one of these every night, Monday through Friday at eight o'clock. Uh, I already have at least three and a bit weeks worth of authors who have all signed up. However, I won't be telling you who's on every night. Remember the old days in the Late Late Show where they'd never tell you who was on? And you wouldn't find out until Gay just went, and now the That's the plan with this, except obviously I'm gonna be going to somebody's house somewhere elsewhere in Ireland, possibly three miles away, somewhere uh, around the country. We have a few people lined up in the UK as well who are gonna come and do these with us over the next um, few uh, days and weeks, because the plan is I'm gonna do this every night of the week for as long as we're all in this situation. Uh, drop a comment below. Please feel free to do so at any stage. If you've got questions for tomorrow night's one at eight o'clock, you can drop them in comments uh, here as well. And other than that, tomorrow on RTE Gold, you'll be able to catch me from 10 a.m. All the details you find, just Google RTE Gold uh, and you'll find it there. Uh, RTE Gold now has 12 hours worth of live programs every day. You'll be able to catch uh, Will Leahy and myself and Keith Walsh and Michael Cowell every day on Gold. Just playing all these not talking about anything else that's going on. None of that stuff happening. So uh, that's it from me for tonight. And we'll see you tomorrow night at eight o'clock here in the book club. Um, yeah, that was right. That was right.